everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I wanted to share with you guys this wonderful little new project that has come out from Designs by Juju. It is a towel topper, and I want to show you this. I made this with some of that uh, chili fabric that I have been working with recently on my YouTube channel. It is called Homegrown Salsa by Deb Strain from Moda. That is the name of this fabric. And Designs by Juju has put out these adorable towel toppers. There are two different ones right now. This is just so easy. It's really super simple to do. Within about an hour, you can have a really cute embellishment for your own kitchen or a gift for somebody else. You know, the possibilities are endless with this. You could make one for your own. This is T for Thompson, that's me. Or maybe you have somebody who has just established their own kitchen for the first time, or you have a friend or something like that. But you could put anything on here, like their initials, and then use one of Designs by Juju's quarter-inch fonts to put in EST period for established in 2021 for the date, or whatever you want to do. These are just great. I will give you a couple of pieces of advice that are real important on here. The very first big thing is do not steam this. If you decide to iron this, don't steam it. If you steam this because it has water soluble stabilizer in it, if you decide to steam it, it will shrivel up like a sauteed mushroom. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> yeah, that was a mess. That didn't come out well at all. That's okay, that's why we test. And then also a big thing to remember is that this little skinny part right here, this is the top of the design. That's very important. I made a mistake on this first one and I put it like this because in my brain, that's how I thought it should go, but that's wrong. So the directions are right, but they weren't right up here. So learn from my mistake. This is the top of the design right up here. Also very important. If you are using a single needle machine, when you load the design into your hoop, you need to make sure that the towel portion is not hanging over the embroidery arm. The towel portion needs to go in toward the throat of the machine. I hope that makes sense. But because the towel is sewn to the bottom on the back of the design, you will need to have the, the towel portion in toward the throat of the machine closest to the body as opposed to usually when we embroider something and we've got too much of it, they make it so that your, your top part can hang up over the arm. Well, if you have a single needle machine, you, you can't get that in there because you've got to lock that hoop into the arm of the machine. So that's really important. Don't mess that up. If you are going to customize this in your own software, be sure to turn it properly so that the top of the design, the skinny part, is toward the body of the machine. Real important. Otherwise, you won't be able to finish it. Also, what I didn't put in the supply list as I go down the row showing what supplies, I forgot to put in there that you will need a scrap of batting, low loft batting. I used Hobbs 8020 batting to put inside of this. I also backed each piece of fabric with fusible fleece. And that gave me just a little bit more stability so that it wasn't quite so floppy. And I would recommend that you might think about that. If you have fusible fleece, you can use SF 101, uh, that Pellon product, SF 101, which is Shape Flex 101. You can try that, put that on. Uh, if you don't have any of that, you could also try iron on um, interfacing. Any kind of iron on anything on the inside of both pieces of fabric. This was just me. This is not what the directions say to do, but I think that it worked really well. I have a nice, it just, it just finished out really, really nice. I'm very, very pleased with this one. Okay, so let's get started. Let's customize the Designs by Juju towel topper. I have Embrilliance Essentials opened up 
and I have a five by seven hoop set right here, which is what the pattern calls for. And in Imbrilliance, if you look down here on the right hand bottom of the screen, it will tell you what hoop you have open right there. And if you want to change it, you can come up to this top menu and there is a button right here for preferences. And when you click that, you'll see program preferences, environment, and hoops. And over here, you, there's a little arrow that shows that hoops is selected. We have the format and you will hit this drop down arrow right here and choose the format that your machine uses and a list of hoops will be there for you. And if you do not see the hoop that you want, you can always create your own by clicking new and giving it a name and filling in the width and the height and clicking okay. When you are going through your list of hoops, you can click on any particular hoop and it will show you right down here in inches and give you an idea of what hoop you are looking at. So I am going to go back to the 130 by 180, which is the five by seven hoop. And I'm just gonna click okay. Now I need to import the towel topper design into Imbrilliance. And the very easiest way to do that is to navigate to the folder where you have the embroidery design. And I have mine right here. I have it embroidery in a folder called kitchen inside of embroidery. And I want to use the hexagon monogram wraparound towel topper. The reason you can see this, it looks like a little picture is because I also have Imbrilliance thumbnailer installed on my computer. That's a little utility by Imbrilliance that is very handy to allow you to actually see your designs before you stitch them out. So I'm going to select this by clicking on it one time and I'm just gonna grab it and pull it over and drag it into the hoop. And then I'm going to come back up here. In this window, there is a little, there is a minus sign to minimize. There is another little box to maximize and then you can close it out. I'm just gonna minimize it. I think the most important thing to remember when you are designing and customizing this particular towel topper is that the top of the towel topper as it will hang from a handle is right over here on the skinny part. Regardless of how your embroidery software pulled it in, this is actually the top of the towel topper as it will hang. So to keep my head straight on how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna come over here into the objects window and click on the design itself. If you do not see objects or properties, on the Imbrilliance window here, you need to come up to the top and go to View. In the top menu, it says View, Toolbars and Windows, and then you want to make sure that Object and Properties is checked. And that way you should be able to see this. And to make these boxes go away, just click anywhere on the screen and they will go away. I want to highlight all of the parts of this design. So I'm going to click on it over here in the objects window. And then over here on the left, there are two blue arrows. There is a 90 degrees counterclockwise turn and a 90 degrees clockwise. I wanna go 90 degrees clockwise and turn the whole thing. So now I know as I'm designing that this is the top right here. And that's going to get me to get my letters in the right orientation on the monogram. Down here in the bottom, you will see it shows selected and it's in yellow. That means it's not going to fit in the hoop right now, but that's okay because we're going to turn it before we take it to the machine and save it. So you can just ignore that this, this means the yellow means there's an error and just ignore that. It's not important right now. I want to use a monogram that I got from Designs by Juju. It is called Ornamental Serif Triple Monogram. And I have it right here. I'm gonna show you now how to merge designs. 
and I'm going to click it and I want to right click, copy. I'm going to come over here to number three and this is where I want it to go and I'm just going to right click and paste. Now we have merged the design. I'm going to grab it right here and bring it down and center it. I think that looks great. If I wanted to just do this individually without merging the design, I could have come up here to the top menu and just clicked on this A for create letters. And then over here, and you'll see ABC comes up in the middle. That is a default, that's fine. And then down in the properties window, there is a drop down. It always defaults to block right in the beginning. And there is a drop down, and you can scroll down and choose any one of the letters uh, fonts that you have. This triple stitch is a it is a BX uh, monogram. It's called let's see ornamental serif triple, and I chose the two inch. And then you will just highlight over that and choose your letter, and put that in. See. But that is exactly the process I went through right here. I just set it up so it was easy for me to grab. But I just wanted to show you, now you know how to merge designs. And you can see here now, so I have the design for the towel topper. There's my first T. Here's my second T. And I don't need that, so I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard with it highlighted. And now it's gone. Now we're not quite finished just yet. We need to make sure that this stitches out in the proper order in the design. I'm going to click on the plus sign in the objects panel and I want it to stitch right after the satin stitching that goes around that monogram. When you click on the plus sign, you're able to see all the individual elements that make up the entire design and each one has a color change, and that's because it is telling the embroidery machine to stop because something needs to happen at that point with an in the hoop project like this. So I'm just gonna go through this, and you can see each time you click on a different element, something highlights right here. And right there is uh, the tuck down, and there is the satin stitch, and I want the monogram to stitch right after that. And what you would do is highlight this, and not on the word letters, but on the picture. You want to grab a hold of it, and we're going to drag it up to be on top of, you want to hover on top of the one you want it to stitch after. So I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to hover over the satin stitch and let go. And now you can see where it's going to stitch the satin stitch. Then it's going to stitch the letters. And then it's going to continue on with the rest of the design. Now I am using a busy print fabric for my towel topper. It's not plain and it, it's not, um, it's, it's the chili peppers and it's very busy. And I don't want these little dots or the little swishes right here to stitch out. So that's highlighted. I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard and make those go away. And then I'm going to also highlight the little teardrop swish looking things. And I'm going to hit delete again there. That's what I want. Now my peppers will show on my fabric and I will have a little T in my monogram and that will look great. Now what I want to do, you can hit control A to select all. So you can either control A for all or you can put your arrow over here in the top left corner and drag it all the way over to the bottom right corner and it will select all. And you can see that it has selected the top portion of the design and the letters and the bottom portion of the design. And now I'm going to come back over here and I want to turn it 90 degrees to the right again. And what that's going to do 
when it is time to stitch the towel to the topper. The towel is going to be over here on the inside of the machine, of the throat of the machine, as opposed to over here where we have the little arm that is going to hook into this. Is, the arm of the embroidery hoop is right here. And this is going to hook into the arm of the embroidery machine. Well, we don't want the towel in the way when we do that because the towel is actually underneath. If the towel was on top, it could just hang over the side and it would be fine. But the towel is underneath, so we it can't come up underneath that arm on the hoop. It needs to be over here on the right, and then we can just connect the arm into the arm of the hoop into the arm of the embroidery machine, no problem. Okay, now we're ready to send it wirelessly to the machine. If you have the Luminaire or the Babylock Solaris, you will come up to the very top menu and click on Utility and scroll down to Send to Solaris XP1. And I'm just going to change the name to Towel Topper T and tell it OK. And it will come up and say file sent to the machine. I'm going to tell it OK. If you do not have the capability to send it wirelessly over to your machine, you're going to come up to the top menu. You need to put a USB stick into your computer and then you're going to say file and scroll down to save stitch file as and you want to hit this little drop down arrow right here and scroll down to where you'll see it say USB drive. And it may have an F or some other letter, but it'll say USB drive. And then I will call it towel topper dash T on here as well. Okay, we're all done. We are ready to take this over to the machine and stitch it out. To make this project, you are going to need your instructions. I recommend you print them out and read through them so you're familiar with the steps before you get to them on the machine. You're going to need at least a five by seven hoop with two pieces of water soluble stabilizer. The two pieces will enable the satin stitching to stitch out pretty well without puckering the project fabric. You're going to need two pieces of fabric, one for the front, one for the back, and then another piece of fabric for your applique. You're going to need a towel, and if your towel has a, a specific design that is the front, you're going to need to pay attention to that and keep that in mind, and I'll tell you when during the process you need to look at that. You're going to want a pair of curved embroidery scissors so that you can trim around your applique fabric. You're going to need some paper tape or some painter's tape and you're going to need a firm cutting surface to cut on when you remove the hoop to trim away the applique fabric. I also have used a thread tree right here to have my threads ready to go. I'll link to this below and uh, this is going to be my all around stitching and I've even created a bobbin out of this thread so that it has the same color on the back as it does the front. In this particular thread tree, there is a spring up at the top that they use as a thread cutter, but I use this as a place to hook all my little thread tails and keep them up out of the way. So we are ready to get started. At your machine, this is the Brother Luminaire you want to go into embroidery. If you have a sewing and embroidery combo, you have to tell it which one you want to do. And I want to do embroidery. If you have an embroidery only machine, that kind of makes the decision for you. I was able to transfer this design wirelessly to the machine. So I want to get into the machine's memory. I'm going to hit the pocket. If you're getting your design from a USB, you're going to want to touch the universal symbol for USB. I'm going to touch the wireless icon and then I'm going to look for it here and it's down in the T's towel topper. All right, and it is this one. That's the one I want. I'm going to hit set and we are all ready to go. So I'm going to hit embroidery. 
Up here in the top menu of this screen, let me explain to you what you're looking at. In this menu, you are given the foot that you need to use, which is the W foot for brother or baby lock machines. That's your embroidery foot. And it tells you which hoops you can use. And the one that you cannot is the four by four. That one is grayed out. And it gives you the dimensions of the design itself. This one is 6.74 by 4.72. There are a total of 17,141 stitches and we haven't completed any of them yet. There are a total of 12 color stops and it should take about 29 minutes to stitch out. I don't need to make any other changes at all. Down here in the main screen we have the total picture of what it is we're going to be making and there is a little tiny green crosshair right here and that crosshair will move around during the embroidery process and it will tell you where you're at. There's another little box right over here and this tells you the stitch that it's about to make, what shape it is going to do. Then it lists all of the color stops and it tells you how long each stitch is going to take. Down here at the bottom of the screen we have return which takes you backwards out of this particular design. We have uh, trim settings right here. This is needle plus minus. This is very important if you have a thread break or your bobbin runs out or something goes wrong and you need to back up in the design, this particular button right here, if I touch it, it opens up a menu. You need to see this so you know how this works. This particular button allows you to jump ahead or go backwards thread colors so you can tell the color right here and I can jump ahead by pressing the down arrow there's the next one, down arrow, I'm going to go back. And then if you need to jump ahead or go back in your th stitch counts, so if you pay attention to the little green crosshair right here, if I press the plus 100 button, you can see that it jumped way over here. That's the first stitch that it's doing is this placement line and from where it starts that's the 100th stitch. If you want to go all the way back to the beginning and start fresh there is a zero right there and if you press the zero button it goes back to the first thread change and you're at zero stitches. I touch the plus 100 again and you can see up here that it's at 100 stitches. I'm going to touch it again and touch it again so you can see and you can, I'll back up 10, 10, plus 1. If you ever have a problem where the machine has, let's say something bad happened and it happened at stitch number 281, whenever you have a problem you want to pay attention to this number so that you can get back to that exact stitch and start again when you're all ready. I'm going to hit the zero button so that we go absolutely back to zero. I'm going to tell it okay and we are ready to get started. I'm going to take my thread stand now and I'm going to put it behind the machine and I'm just going to stand it in a place where it's not going to be touched by the embroidery arm at all as it moves around. I'm going to push it way back over here. Now it's out of the way completely. And we are ready to go. When I'm starting this project, I have a regular white bobbin inside of the machine right here. I'll switch it to the other color bobbin when we get ready to do the final uh, outer stitching. Put my hoop into the machine. When you put your hoop into or take it out of your embroidery machine, I highly recommend you take your hand and hold the machine arm steady so that it doesn't accidentally get pushed out of alignment. If it does get pushed out of alignment, you will need that needle plus minus button to move back and forth between thread changes in order for it to get back to exactly where you want it to be. So I have put the button down to lock the hoop into the arm of the embroidery machine and we are ready to go. I am going to just press the green button.
I want to remind you, and I should have said something earlier, again, be sure that the part that is going to be attached to the towel, which is right here, is facing in toward the throat of the machine. You want the towel when it is sewn on to be on this side, not on this side. So this is your batting placement line. I'm gonna take a piece of batting and I'm just gonna put it down, making sure all of my stitches are covered and let it stitch on. I just grabbed a scrap. It's time for the tack down line of the first fabric. I'm going to put the fabric on here. Now it's time for the placement stitch for the applique fabric for the monogram. You need to put your fabric down face up. Make sure that it covers all of the placement stitch by at least half an inch. Now it's time to remove the hoop from the machine. We're going to trim away the applique fabric and we're going to trim away this fabric and batting right here. I'm going to put my hand on the arm of the embroidery machine and pull out the hoop. When you're trimming fabric from in the hoop, there might be a tendency to turn your scissors. You don't want to do that. You want to trim with this as flat as possible against your project so you can get very close to the stitching without cutting it. There's going to be a satin stitch all around here, so you want to trim the fabric close enough that it will be covered by that satin stitch. I'm going to rub it, make sure it doesn't have any little fraying, and that way, that way nothing's going to stick outside of the satin stitch. And now it is time to cut away the rest of the top. You can cut the fabric and then the batting, or you can do them both at the same time, whatever works best for you. Now comes the hard part. Sometimes it's easy to just stick your scissors in there and kind of trim this first and uh, trim through the center. Be careful not to trim away your stabilizer. If you cut it a little bit, that's all right. Try not to. Okay, this looks really good. Got a couple little loose threads here on the side. I'm gonna make sure all that's trimmed up so they don't stick through the satin stitching. And now it's going to do the overall satin stitching around the monogram. Next is the background stitching for the monogram. I am going to leave the same color in. Don't you just love hearing your machine sing to you like that? <laughs> Such a beautiful sound. I'm going to switch out my threads, and I don't know if you can see it, but the way I do that is I am going to take the thread and trim it at the top. I'm going to tuck the end into that little spring, and then I'm going to grab the next thread in the design, which is the yellow. That's going to be the T, and I'm just going to tie it. I, I put both ends together. And I'm just going to tie it into a single loop and pull the tails through that single loop. That works just fine. And then I'm going to pull the thread from in front of the needle through the machine until I get the little knot it popped out of that top thread guide. There we go. And I'm going to press the button and thread the needle. And now it's ready to make the letter. So I want to tell you right now, it left a little bit of a tail and I don't want that tail to get possibly you know, left, caught or anything like that. I'm going to raise the presser foot. I like to keep a, a pair of long 
tweezers right at uh, my embroidery machine. I'm just going to grab ahead of that tail. Usually the tail will get pulled down inside, but if it doesn't, don't be afraid to stop the machine, take care of it, and then you can start up again. That's perfect. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, it's time to take the hoop out of the machine again, and we're going to put the backing fabric on the back. Okay, boy, this is looking good. I am so excited about this. I have this huge urge to continue to trim, y'all. Now, um, in the end, I've always said, Sharpies are an embroiderer's best friend, so if you have some extra pieces that are hanging out in the end, don't be afraid to take a Sharpie to them and color them in and make a match. All right, so now we need to take the back fabric, and I'm, I've got a lot of little knot tails. I'm not gonna cut the knots. I'm just gonna cut the tails, because it's gonna go over it again in a couple of different places. You don't have to do this. I have just, uh, I just do it as a course of, just, I don't know. I'm just picky, I guess, when it comes to this. The fewer threads in the way, the better, but that's a pretty good knot right there, and you're gonna hear it thunk as the needle goes over it, and uh, it won't cause any problems, but just the less opportunity for bulk, the better. Okay, so now I'm going to put this fabric over the back, completely cover it. I'm gonna take my paper tape, and I recommend that you tape to the plastic part of the frame in addition to taping the fabric, that seems to stick best um, than just taping, like if you were to tape it onto here, it seems to come off. But if you tape it on the fabric and then tape it on the frame, it's gonna hold really good. You do not want this to get flopped around. Now, put this back into the machine and we're going to stitch the back fabric to the project. Before I do that, I am going to switch out my bobbin and put in my bobbin that matches my final satin stitch thread. I'm gonna do a thread color change here as well. I love the drop-in bobbin on the Brother machines. Whenever you put fabric on the back, before you make your first stitch, lift the hoop as best you can and look under there and make sure there's nothing folded over or caught or anything like that. Always get into that habit. You'll be so glad you did. Okay, it is time for the final satin stitching. You want to remove the hoop from the machine and we're gonna cut away the fabric from the back. I got a little bit of a knot. I heard it snag. I'm gonna trim away all these extra threads right here. And now I'm going to trim away all of this. Okay, that looks great. We are ready to do the satin stitching all around. This takes 17 minutes, so we'll see you back here when it's done. The next stitches are the placement lines for where the towel needs to be placed. And you're not gonna be able to see these because I'm gonna leave them in red so that they don't show up. All right, you need to remove the hoop from the machine. Here's the towel, the, the end that has, so this end has two red stripes, that's the bottom of the towel, this is the front of the towel. I'm gonna get smart and tear off some tape first. That'll make life a lot easier. Okay. So, take your towel, the bottom edge of your towel. This is the back with the tag. Right sides together. And I'm gonna look for the center. The, the back of this hoop has little knobs or little, I don't know, divot things where center is. And I'm going to put the edge of the towel, not up here, 
I'm going to I'm going to put it right with the edge of that stitching. I know you can't see it because it's the same color, but I can see it. And then I'm going to you want just like this. So now this is the top. This this is the front side of the towel. Remember? Cuz there's my tag. So this is the front side of the towel. Front side up. I'm going to tape this as best I can. Now you want to take your towel and I'm going to kind of roll it up like this. That way I don't have a lot of weight pulling on the tape when I go to put it back in the hoop. So now I have a little hoagie roll here of my towel, okay? And I'm going to flip it around. See what I did? Okay. So now I'm looking at the back side of the towel. There's that tag. Okay. Let's put it back into the machine. I'm just going to lay it on top like this. Put it back into the machine and make sure the towel goes on the other side of the embroidery foot. You don't want it to get all wrapped up. You want it nice and flat. It's going to take a little finagling here. Make sure everything's nice and flat. I'm going to look under here. It looks like everything is in place. Okay. We got all the way to the end and that didn't cut quite cut. We had a lot of thickness there, that's okay. So let's take it out and see what it looks like. I've got some knots here I want to get rid of, or some tails. Don't cut the knots, just cut the little threads. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take my tape and take it out of the hoop. One way to take this off, the fibrous water soluble, is to trim it very close to the edge. Well, I have a little bit different technique I want to show you. I want to thank Marilyn for this little nugget of information, one of the viewers. So I have some water, I have a towel, I have some cotton swabs. What Marilyn suggested doing, and I, I've tried it and it's brilliant, is you pull the water soluble very tightly, like over the edge of the project, and I'm dipping the Q-tip into the water and then rubbing it like this. This way you don't have to get it completely wet. And look, it just pulls away with the tension you're putting on the stitches. This is just the best way. I love it. No chance of accidentally cutting away those satin stitches and causing fraying. Gluey, gluey. Now, the way you want to do this so here's the back. You want to fold this like this. Let's go to the stove. I know you don't normally hear let's go to the stove in an embroidery video, but this is how it goes. Okay, so here is the front. You want to fold the towel like this. And then you're going to drop it right behind the bar, the handle and then fold this over. Now here's the front and tuck it through the opening and pull it up snug. And look at that. I love it. How cool is that? All right, you guys, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Hello, boo-boo.